We can use several approaches to evaluate linearity of our experimental data. In this video, we will look at the simplest methods, which are the visual evaluation and the different uses of residuals. The simplest method to evaluate the linearity is the visual evaluation of the calibration graph, which is also suggested by several validation guidelines. From the calibration graph, where we have plotted the signals and the concentration of analyte in the calibration samples, we can clearly see the difference between a linear and a not linear calibration graph. But what is it that we are actually looking at and evaluating? In order to evaluate linearity, we have to know that the simple linear regression model is achieved by setting a straight line through the data points so that the sum of squared residuals is minimal. What does this mean? When we take a closer look of our calibration graph, we see that there is a difference between the experimental signal we get from our measurements and the calculated signal we get from the calibration function describing our calibration model. And this difference between the experimental signal and calculated signal is defined as the residual. Therefore, when using the visual evaluation of linearity, we actually evaluate the random distribution of residuals along the calibration graph. We also evaluate the homoscedasticity. That means that the residuals have to have approximately the same magnitude over the concentra concentration range of interest. Or in other words, the standard deviation of signal should be constant over the observed concentration range. Visual evalu evaluation can be used in clear-cut situation, but additional confirmation is suggested, especially when we are in doubt and we are not certain if our calibration graph is linear or not. Now let's look at the use of plot of residuals when evaluating li the linearity. From the definition of the residual, we can find uh, a residual value for each experimental signal. As we make several measurements for our linearity evaluation experiments, we can plot all these residuals on a graph where the concentration of analyte or the calculated signal is plotted on the abscissa. From this graph we can see that the residuals are placed randomly. Also we see that the deviation of the residuals is not uh, dependent on the concentration of analyte. Therefore, we can say that our calibration graph is linear and the data is homoscedastic. We can use a simple linear regression model. However, here we can see that the residuals are placed randomly. However, their values increase with the increase of concentration. Therefore, we shouldn't use simple linear regression model and instead, weighted linear regression model can be more suitable for this data. When our calibration graph is not linear, we can see a systematic placement of the residuals on this graph. The residuals have the same sign at lower concentrations and higher concentrations and the opposite sign in the middle part. Therefore, we shouldn't use linear regression model. Also, we can see the heteroscedasticity on this graph. In addition to the plot of residuals, Sanko guidelines also suggest using relative residuals, which we obtain when we divide the residuals with the calculated signal value. And the relative residuals should be within plus minus 20% for the calibration model to be acceptable. To sum it up, visual evaluation can be a quick and suitable method for clear-cut situations. However, it can be subjective and additional confirmation, for example, using the plot of residuals, is suggested.